defrost both those leftovers because it's time for a fresh new crit sandwich. I got beer all over my arm when That's I That's unfortunate. <laughs> wow. Welcome to Crit Sandwich on Crit Sandwich for Friends Play 5th Edition D&D loosely based on our favorite movies, TV shows, and video games. Each season we randomly roll for our new scenarios. This is episode 4 of Campaign 7. Go back and start at any episode 1 or 0 for this, our 7th campaign. We are soldiers in a wizardocracy playing through the plot of Big Trouble in Little China. My name is Casey Sears. I'm playing the gnomish artificer Kurt Carpenter. To my left is Chuck Ventus. Who are you? Howdy ho. I am the DM for this campaign. I am playing all NPCs. Across the table from me, Robbie Ponder. Who are you? Hello. I play Carlos De La Cruz, a level five gunslinger. That's right. We just leveled up to level five. Big level for everyone. To my right, Matt Popich. Are you going to ask me who I am? Who are you? I'm Gajimbo <laughs> Zarelia. I you know, I didn't know your last holiday. name. Zorelia. Uh, Zorelia. Carpenter Zorelia. I can add it to the show notes. Sure. Wait, what is Zorelia? Why do I know that word? Does that mean know. anything? It sounds like Corelia, I guess, now mm. that I'm thinking of it, but that's not where I, I just kind of made it up. All right, Chuck, what do you got for us? So the players found themselves in a, uh, a corridor just escaping from the the water tank fight with the sea hags and as they were standing in the corridor carlos received a message within his brain he could hear the wizard king speaking to him uh, and the wizard king provided them with some assistance to a a small a pouch with two beans in it which uh when planting one of the beans it did sprout into a secret room into another plane as the characters went inside, they felt rejuvenated and ready to go and healed up, and they pressed on through the Dungeon of David, where they had to overcome some obstacles and almost being squished to death by a gelatinous cube compactor. And the characters have now escaped that. And I'd like to just go around briefly before we get into uh, where you guys are right now. What did you guys get at level 5? Robbie, what did Carlos get at level 5? was the extra attack, which is actually pretty big and i'm up to 50 hp nice matt what did go jimbo get yeah proficiency which is always good extra die on some stuff is kind of sweet and then some class spells and then one pick of a spell oh and an extra attack as well that's pretty huge i wasn't super excited by any of the spells so <laughs> we'll see i i, I picked but. one that likely will not ever come into play but it's, I, it's apparently a secret so well it's a cool spell i think <laughs> but I, I also have to think about it for flavor types so i don't know we'll see all right casey what did kurt get kurt got an extra attack with his pistol and he got access to second level spells the most useful in the previous episode would have been levitate hmm. very nice yeah you could have gotten over that uh Some pressure sleep. plate just yeah. in front of you Mm -hmm. would have been useful. Over all those jumps is what I was thinking of. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. The characters have just escaped the gelatinous cube compactor, and they walk through a door, and then they find themselves in another room that leads to two paths. One path leading up a set of stairs, and there's another path just off to their right, and it's a door, and they can see a shimmering gold light just kind of glistening from the bottom of the door. And I'd like for all of you to make a perception check, please. 11 for Kurt. We got that uh, extra proficiency bonus when we hit 5. That's right. 15 for Jimbo. 17 for Carlos. So as you're standing there in that little small hallway, you can hear a sort of <laughs> giggling sound coming from behind the door that has the gold light shimmering underneath it. Kind of sounds like... <laughs> like it's a deep voice? It's like... <laughs> It's Beavis and or Butthead. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what I was Did thinking. I? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you guys do? Well, I'll put my ear on that door and okay. see if I can get a listen. And just I'll, I'll hold my finger out and make the little shush face and put my ear on the door and see what, what I hear. Okay. You continue to hear some giggling sounds. You hear this. It's a, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Great, great. <laughs> <laughs> Once masturbating. 
What? That's not what I sound <laughs> That's like. I don't get that at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do, do you yeah. care to elaborate, Robbie? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> you giggle when you do it, I guess. Or... <laughs> sorry. This sorry, conversation everyone. got dark real quick. But yeah, you hear giggling behind the door. <laughs> what? <laughs> Matt is face palming. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm in disbelief. I don't like, know. <coughs> yeah. All I, right. Yeah. Like <laughs> I want to explore this further, but I don't because I don't. My, my, my I don't. Anyway. All right. Well, so then don't go downstairs. We'll go upstairs. You don't want to explore further. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you just hear that, like the laughing coming from the other side of that door, and just kind of like, uh, all right. And it's just, it's a lot of like giggling. There are two doors in this. So the one Mark. path leads up a set of stairs, like okay. very high up, and then there's just this door right next to you. I guess we should probably check this out on our way. Seems like a side quest, but sure. I will stay low if someone, you know, with my with my pistol drawn, and I guess Gracie's still with us. Yeah, Gracie's along. still with you. And I will, I guess, just ready my pistol and open that open that door very slowly, as someone's probably standing over me also with a gun drawn. Okay, Carlos. Yeah, perhaps. of course. All right. Go, Jimbo. Are you doing anything? Or? Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably be the one entering, but with my shield like in front of all of us, basically. Okay. As you enter the room, make another perception check. Twenty-two for Kurt. Ooh. And fifteen for Carlos. Okay. As you all enter the room, it is a you enter a very large circular shaped room. You can see mounds of gold just piled up on the sides of the room. Uh, and it's also scattered throughout the room. In the very center of the room, Kurt, as you walk in, you'll notice a pair of legs. Uh, you'll first hear this. You'll, As the door is being opened up, you'll hear, oh, oh. And then as you walk in, you'll see a pair of legs just diving into a very large chest sitting in the very center of the room. Okay. Right, Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you guys, you you guys will also see as you make your way into the room, there is sort of blood kind of trickle or what seems to be a blood substance trickled around the chest area, and it's smeared uh, a trail up onto the wall. And written in this substance, you can see the words just plain as day: "Beware of mimic." Um, this looks like some sort of blood magic trap, you guys. We have no need of gold. Our goal here is the princess. And I will say, I forgot to say this, on the opposite side of the room, there is a large door uh, on the opposite side of the room as well. Our goal is to find the princess. We have no need of anything in this room. Let's explore the stairs upwards as opposed to messing with this bloody <laughs> trap. Um, but whatever's in that chest knows we're here now. You'll hear a so Casey or Casey since Kurt had such a high or the highest perception role. You'll hear, oh, did are they still here? Oh, huh? oh, are they gone? And you might you see it slightly creak open, and then shut as um, you look towards the chest. We can see you in there. Hello. You know, I actually don't think this creature of some sort is part of David's army or minions. David would only have humans at his side and not this Scrooge McDuck guy. <laughs> um, well, he's already using hags and cubes and all sorts of other abominations. Well, those are m monsters and creatures, and this one is more of a race and not a creature. As you guys are talking, you'll hear uh, a voice come from within the chest and it'll say, What do you want? Are, are you here to steal my treasure as well? Uh, no, we don't care about your treasure at all. We're just making our way through. Okay. We seek the queen who has been stolen by the dark wizard, David. Do um, you know anything of this? I was just looking for the library. All right, and then as you guys say that, the chest will open up, and you will see a little goblin just kind of poke his head out, and he'll say, uh, so you're, you're not here to steal my treasure? No. We're not even allowed to technically because of... Uh, Article 3, subsection C, point 2. Well quoted, Kurt. We have no want nor need of your treasure. If this is yours by law, we have no intention of touching it. Uh, yeah. I eye the treasure. Oh, okay. Uh, very, very good. All right. Uh, <laughs> if it, it, actually, if you're not here to get the treasure, you're here to get rid of the other guys, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. 
So the treasure will be all mine and nobody will be taking it. Precisely. Very good. Oh, I, I could probably assist you on the way. Sure. Or assist you in some matter. Uh, I, I love jokes. I love jokes. Tell me, tell me a joke. Why? Wait, wait, I'll tell you a joke first. No, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I have one. Right. No, Already. no, go ahead. No, Car Carlos, come on, let him speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me speak, let me speak. Why do dragons hate paladins? I furrow my brow. Because they taste lawful. <laughs> and he just like <laughs> lets out this stupid laugh. <laughs> and he's like patting his knee. And he hop at this point he hops out of his chest and you can just see like he's just got little, little tattered clothing on him and he say now, now you tell me you, you tell me a joke and the two best will get a special treat from me from me Why did the banana go to the doctor I don't know why because it wasn't peeling well Oh okay <laughs> he does like a little giggle Now you two you two and he points to uh Kurt and Gojimbo Come, come, tell me a joke, tell me a joke. Uh, what's the difference between a gnome and a home? I, I don't know, what? N nothing. <laughs> That's great. And you? He made a paladin joke, so I've been trying to make a paladin <laughs> joke. So here's what I came up with off the top of my head. What did the goblin say when he couldn't find what he was looking for to eat? I don't know, what? Rats. They, oh. eat, they eat rats. <laughs> yeah, okay. It was off the top of and my he head. Said, There's, these are all good jokes. I, good jokes. Oh, okay. Do you like my little trap that I put up here? It's, I, to, it's to try and keep them out. It's, it's hardly work, though. Oh, so you're not... Oh, okay, yeah, I see. So you're not actually a mimic. I think that's a good, good idea because we were frightened. We were never going to mess with your treasure. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's, it's slightly working. I quite like having hands. Oh, oh. That's good, yes. Mimics will, they'll, they'll hurt you. It's kept people away from the chest, that's for sure. Uh, but I, I like your two jokes. I like all three of them, actually, but uh, you two, what you two get something it? special from me, and he points to Kurt and Carlos. But you get something special too, big guy. Don't worry. And he, you see him run back over to his little uh, chest, the large chest in the center of the room, jump inside of it uh, and you hear see the chest like bounce around a little bit he comes out and presents you two with a blue item each a rare item so you guys can ch pick one rare item each Carlos as Robbie and Casey are picking out one blue item I'll let you pick whatever you want he goes to go Jimbo and says uh, now this used to be a uh, this is for you this is was my great grandfather Blinkies and uh, I think you'll find it useful uh, and he hands you what looks to be a uh, a small spyglass. Now, just remember, get rid of those guys so the treasure's all mine. Hee hee hee. And then he runs off and jumps back into his chest. It shakes a little bit, and then it just stops. Uh, could you point us towards the library? I assume he's not going to respond, though. He's gone. Or he doesn't respond at that point, so. Uh, I want to look through the spyglass and just look around. Okay. So it's a normal-looking spyglass. It's an old-fashioned model. Are we talking like a pirate? So like kind of a pirate spyglass yeah. kind, of like kind of thing. And when you look into it, you can see some sort of image at the end of the spyglass, but it's out of focus. Can I try and like twist the end to focus? Yeah. When you try to adjust the focus, a spring-powered small blade triggers and stabs you in the eye. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, you will now have disadvantage on perception checks for the remainder of the campaign. Cool. <laughs> Whoa, bad for Matt. At first I thought you were joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> so you just see Gojimbo messing with this spyglass oh, yeah. and he's trying to focus it and all of a sudden just you hear this like bing. He just like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just swings his head loud. back and he's just been stabbed in the eye, has a little bit of blood coming out of his eye. Uh I would imagine a lot. A lot, yeah. I would say I should take some damage. Sure. I'll give you a little bit of damage. Two damage. Okay. So Gojimbo lets out this like sound and how big is this chest that he jumped into? Uh, it's about the size of like a, uh, I don't know. It's probably like 10, 10 by 10, 10 by 10. Or, I'm sorry. No, like 10 by five, like a pretty big, like treasure chest kind of thing. Actually, a chest isn't that big. It's like five feet. I'm sorry. Like yeah. a, just a five by five. So it's a small spot. Like feet. Yeah. 
the length of a person, I would say. It's a pretty Jesus. big chest. That's really big. So the object that he hands me is the chime of opening. It oh. is a hollow metal tube measured about a foot long and weighs a pound. You strike it as an action, pointing at an object within 120 feet of you uh, that can be opened, such as a door, lid, or a lock. The chime issues a clear tone. One lock or latch on the object opens unless the sound can't reach the object. So almost like a tuning fork looking thing that I can uh, bang and then point. Okay. I and like it. can it. be used 10 times. Wow. It's really good. Yeah, it's blue. <laughs> I was trying to find something blue that, because I'm all full up on attuned items. So something, trying to find something that is not. Doesn't require attunement. attunement. It's hard. All right. And then Carlos, what did the goblin give you? While Robbie chooses to look for an item, <laughs> I will go ahead and read one from Valod, B A L L O D. Hello. Read one what? Valud. You're going to read one what? A review. All right. We're reading reviews on the show now. We so are. It's as awesome. As you guys leave reviews, uh, we're going to start reading them on the show while Robbie makes decisions. He titled this Review You Wanted. Hello. I didn't actually. Hello. I didn't know you guys didn't get so many reviews or I would have wrote one sooner. I listen on Spotify, so dot, dot, dot. But I love you guys so much. Some of the things I really enjoy about the podcast is Robbie's in-depthness, Matt's game knowledge, Chuck's ability to get really into the character, and Casey's descriptiveness. Love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. Robbie's in-depthness is the time that we enjoy to give you reviews so mm -hmm. and read, read them back to you. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's been really helpful. Most of our listeners, for whatever reason, are on Spotify, and we need those Apple podcast reviews real bad. So keep leaving them, and we'll keep reading them. <laughs> and he's still not done. <laughs> it's hard to pick a blue item just off the blue. Oh, well, if you want to trade, you can be fucking stabbed in the eyeball, and I could have had one by now. <laughs> oh, man. Is there a broom, <laughs> broom of flying? Cloak of the Bat, Matt, you heard of that one? Cloak of the Bat? Uh, it doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, do a cloak. Cool. Cloak protection. There you go. One plus one to AC, and I, plus one. I'd rather do something that throws. helps me fight. What about that rod of can't be moved? Immovable, Immovable rod. rod. That's a good one. All right. Well, Robbie's looking for his item. I might go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> what would you guys like to do from here on out? So you see a large door on the opposite side of the room from where you came in. The goblin has dove back into his chest. It's a little chest house. Let's, uh, I guess, just go around this room since. Uh, we can. Okay. So you just explore the room. There is gold scattered everywhere. I want for you to make a perception check as you're looking around. S -s my problem is, is for some reason, I'm in the homebrew magic items. That's what my issue is. I don't know how to turn it off. Uh, what'd you get? Uh, what did Kurt get? 21. 21. All right. That door on the opposite side of the room is not normal looking. You get the sense that it's not a real door. So I will... As I'm looking at it, and I'm like, mm, this, this seems a little odd. And I use my chime, and I bang it on the ground, and I point the tuned fork at it, and the little the ding and the ring goes forward, and does it latch or unlock or open? It doesn't latch or open, but you do see the door slightly go, <laughs> and just kind of like shake a little bit. Um, Guys, that goblin might not have been telling us the truth about a mimic. We should probably not use that door. We have the alternate route up the stairs. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so you guys choose not to go through the large growling door and head up the stairs. Back, head back into the hallway and then head up the stairs. As you guys head up the stairs, you find yourselves in a large square room with a large circular pit just in front of you. Beyond that pit, you see a set of stairs that go up 60 feet up into another room. And in the distance, you can see books, bookshelves and books up in that room. Guys, we might have found a library. Also, just pause for a second. Robbie, if you're still looking for stuff, uh, great blue items that are very simple. Do you have room for a tuned item still? Yes. Yes. Uh, braces of defense, ring of evasion. Those are two really, really good blue items that you can attune to. Braces of defense just give you like one AC, uh, ring of evasion lets you, uh, when you fail a dexterity saving throw while wearing it, you can use your reaction to succeed instead. I have actually one of those on right now that I forgot about. The ring of evasion? Yep. All right. I'll give it a ring of evasion. That's fine. I don't want to spend like the whole time trying to find something. You know? Yeah, I'm you like, need to listen to the yeah. story. Yeah. All right. So 
I'll say that again. You guys walk into, go up the stairs. You find yourselves in a large square room with a large circular pit just in front of you. Beyond that is a set of stairs that go up 60 feet into a room that has bookshelves lining the back wall from what you can see. So you would assume that you've made it to uh, the library area. In this room, you can see, again, banners of David just kind of like hanging uh, off to the side, t- uh, tied up by ropes that come down from pulleys and are tied to the side walls. All right, you guys, one of David's main lieutenants may be in this room. So I say we go in guns blazing and I like flip some switches on my pistol and like gear starts spinning and it starts whirring. Okay. Yeah, I will prepare myself for battle as well. I will make sure my rifle is cleaned and, and has no jams in it. And I will prepare uh, a round. I'll put a pellet in the chamber of my sniper rifle and, and I will use the scope on the rifle to scan around in the this room with the pit and the, and the steps. Okay. And then go Jimbo, you doing anything? Just getting out my sword and shield and keep preparing myself for one-eyed combat. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> all right so you guys start to head i'm guessing you head towards the the stair area mm-hmm. correct all right so as you move towards the stairs you have to you move past the circular pit that is just at the base of the stairs so it is kind of you have to kind of walk around it slightly you find yourselves at the the bottom of the staircase does anybody want to do anything before heading up the stairs or what well, i mean what's in the pit looking into it uh you look in the pit you can see bits of broken wood and some sort of black sludge uh, kind of like on the wood that is kind of sticking up from the bottom. It's about 60 feet deep. Okay? Yeah. All right. So you guys head up to the top of the stairs. Are we walking past those banners of David? You are, yes. I'm a, I still want to rip them down, and I will throw them in the pit. Okay. You throw them in the pit, and they just kind of fall down and just kind of lay down in there. Take All that. Right. Take that, zombie. Yeah. All right. Make a perception check. Hearing so, Matt, this is a normal one for you. At the bottom of the stairs, maybe even better because <laughs> of my big old ears, but not really. I got a five, fifteen for Kurt, a twelve for Carlos. Okay, Carlos and Kurt, you guys begin to hear uh, whispering or talking uh, at the top of the stairs, and it's two voices, uh, and you hear one say, "This is what David's looking for." Ah, yes, soon the prophecy will be complete. On top of that, soon only humans will be worthy to wield magic. Nothing will stand in our way. I guess the only thing left to do is uh, the ceremony and ritual. That's right. Then David will be (laughs) all-powerful. You just hear him start to cackle and laugh at the top of the stairs. So there's two of them. Two of them. You hear two voices, yes. All right, so I am going to put my finger up to my face and make a little shush face. I'll say, let's follow them and whisper to everybody, just like, let's follow them, as I pull out some dust of disappearance out of my pocket, I can make us all invisible. What do you guys think about that? Damn. I think it's worth a shot. I also think I'm a huge elephant in chainmail armor, so even invisibility, unfortunately, isn't my... <laughs> even invisible, <laughs> I'm not exactly quiet, uh, but we could try. Is that what you want to do? I kind of think, I don't know, getting the jump on them would, is really the idea. I'm kind of having a hard time visualizing the space. Like, there's so just, you're at the bottom of, of a staircase and, and you're a looking up the stairs. So it's just, no, straight, just straight up, up stairs. Staircase. Straight okay. up stairs. At the top of the stairs, you can see what looks like a library room. Mm-hmm. It looks like Rose it's a bigger and... room at the top of the okay, stairs. Okay, so it goes like really deep. So it goes really deep, yeah. And are they going to come back this way? Uh, you don't know. Okay. You just hear them up there talking right now, and they're just kind of like laughing and gathering Wait. stuff so so i i'm holding on to that dust of disappearance i'm generally i'm not the kind of guy who's into burning books but uh if anybody had some sort of fire bomb or something we could throw up there that might be a good idea i do not have a fire bomb carlos you got no, anything i got a sniper rifle <laughs> i if you really want to make one you can get some of that oil down there and catch it on molotov cocktail style yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. Grab one of those banners you put down there, right. light it, and then toss it into the books oh, or wow. into the library. Yeah, I have a tinder box. Yeah, we, we got lighters on us. So we're just trying okay. to burn it. So what are, what are you doing? What's yeah, going get... on here? This uh, I will remind you that this, pe- or, I'm sorry, this pit is 60 feet deep. Okay, so maybe not. We're not going to reach that stuff. 
All right, so I guess let's just uh, sneak up the stairs, but not invisible. I need stealth checks from everybody. I'm rolling at disadvantage. You are at disadvantage, sir. Yes. I only got a nine. Oh, that's what I got, too. Take that. Carlos got a 15. Okay. So as you guys get about three quarters of the way up the stairs, you just hear the two voices stop talking for a second and say, what? What? Who, who's there? Go, go, go. Go. Take this. And you just hear a sound. And then you continue to hear just one voice talking to you saying, show yourself. And then they kind of, you would hear running, running towards the back of the room, but it doesn't go very far. I don't know for initiative or anything now, but I will run up and just scorching Ray as much shit as I can, okay. including that person. <laughs> so as you get to the top of the steps, you hear a, and the stairs that Go Jimbo and Carlos are standing on still about three quarters Gracie. away, and Gracie, they start to shift slightly and turn into a ramp. You guys will have an opportunity to run to the top of the steps if you'd like, or if you just want to stay there. However, as the steps are starting to shift, grease will start to come out of the crevices and create a ramp covered in grease leading all the way down to the bottom pit area. Sorry, guys. You and guys Gracie. have an opportunity. It's moving very slowly, so you can hear it <laughs> shuffling. I'll give you an opportunity to run to the top of the steps if you'd like. I, I will. I, I think I'm up further in front of him since I can probably sneak faster since I'm more dexterous. More dexterous. dexterous yes, yeah, more dexterous. dexterous. <laughs> and <laughs> Gracie will just be running after me. So if I'm at the top, she'll be running up to the top too. Okay. That's 20. 20. What are we rolling for? The run up. You're just running run up, up the stairs. I'm just giving you an opportunity. If you want to run up, I'll let you do it. So it's oh. moving. It's so shifting. It's, like, chirk, 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 chirk. it's just, yeah, it's like tilting backwards Am to I create a ramp. You have enough time to get to the top. So yeah, you start you, feeling it shift and all the gears yeah. move. Okay. Oh. Okay. If I have time like, to do an action, I want to do an action. But okay. We'll get to that again. Matt, are you running to the top of the steps? Yep. Okay. So as soon as you guys get to the top of the steps, we're all going to roll initiative. Nine for Kurt. 16 for Carlos. 14 for Gojimbo. So as you guys make it to the top of the steps, you can see that this room is, or it's a square room, huge room, and the walls are just covered in bookshelves. There's just books everywhere uh, around the outer edge of the room. In the center of the room, you can see a, a bookshelf that goes about 15 feet across, uh, horizontal from you, and it is about waist high. And you can also see uh, very large uh, tables in the room along with these very, uh, like, with chairs that have, like, claw foot. Like, they're very antique wooden chairs just kind of, like, sitting in the room. As you do, you do see a mage, a wizard-looking fellow, pop his head out from the back. And I'm trying to remember, I believe it was Gojimbo and Carlos. When you were blinded before, you saw... I'm sorry, all of you saw shadowy figures uh, in episode two. This looks to be the shape of one of those... Uh, figures that was standing behind David. The undead thing, right? Yes. But this guy doesn't look like he's undead. He's just a human, kind of draped in black and red robes. And he says, what are you doing here? And you see him clench his fist. He's first to go. He clenches his fist and casts mage armor on himself. So you see him just kind of glow with this hard light red armor that just kind of surrounds him. Where is he at in the room? He is back behind the bookshelf area. So he's in the center in the of the room. Okay. How far okay. away? Uh, he's about 30 feet away from you. Okay. So as that happens, he'll now take about 15, a step back, about 15 feet. You will see four chairs begin to rise from the table that he was standing at. And they will kind of shift a little bit and stand up and start to move in your direction. Oh, Robbie. Oh, Robbie. Animated object. Oh, yeah. At least it wasn't books. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, at least it wasn't books. <laughs> So the stairs will stay away from the bookshelves, you guys. Don't let them fall on you. I will say, like, with the chairs being normal, they are, I guess, like, kind of in a prone position. They will use half their movement to kind of stand up and move towards you 15 feet. So they are heading in your direction. And they will spread. Two will go to the outside edges of the center bookshelf area. Uh, so you have the center bookshelf that is about waist high, just straight in front of you. The wizard-looking fellow... Uh, directly behind that, about 45 feet back from you, and then two chairs walking around the outside edge of that center bookshelf area. And it is Carlos's turn. 
So at the beginning, you said that he handed something to somebody and he said, get out of here. Is there a second person in the room? So you didn't actually see that, but you heard him heard say, it. get yeah. out of here. And you just heard like a, a sound. Take this and get out of here. Take said. this and get out of here. Okay. Now, does this mage, does he have anything in his hands? He has a small dagger that he's holding in his hand. All right. I guess I don't care about that. I will shoot him. Roll a hit. 29. Yeah, that's a hit. I have a plus 11 to hit. Robbie and his archer characters. Ooh, <laughs> man. I rolled an 8. That's max damage right there. Very good. 8 plus 6, so that's 14 damage. All righty. If I can, I run up to the in the middle of the room where that's you said there's a bookshelf that's waist high. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna run up to that and I'm just gonna duck behind it and for maybe I can get you'll get partial yeah. cover if you go up behind that bookshelf. Yep, I'll there run there. Okay, so you run up about 15 feet and hide behind this bookshelf area to get partial cover. Yep. All right, and that's your turn. Go, Jimbo. You're up next. All right, there's two chairs between me and the wizard. There's four chairs. Oh, I thought you said some went along the outside. Two, okay. two to the they, they kind of spread out or on the yeah. outside of that bookshelf that's separating you and that wizard guy. So two on each side. Okay. Um, how big is the bookshelf? Waist high. Oh. And he's just on the other side of it. He's just on the other side of it. Yep. And how far away is this bookshelf? I'm sorry, did I just ask that? The bookshelf is 15 feet away from you, and he is 30 feet behind that. So about four. He's about 45 feet away from you in total distance. Oh fuck! All right, I want to run. I'm gonna dash. As my act, as my action, okay, and I am going to try to just l- like plow through this bookshelf and get to the w- <laughs> in melee range of the wizard. Okay, make a, a a strength check for me. Is this the bookshelf I'm next to? Yeah, fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, I will say that with your move, like you do plow through this bookshelf and like knock it over, and it kind of falls falls down straight in front of you and how far did you want to move right up to him yeah up to melee range yep. okay you get within melee range of him that carlos you no longer have uh partial cover because your sergeant just plowed through the bookshelf that you yeah imagine behind. there's papers and and papers yeah books and papers just everywhere. go like flying everywhere and just kind of like flying to the air yeah there's something in front of me i was leaning on and now it's gone kurt it is your turn sir all right, so my repeater pistol had already been kind of set to the fire uh, fire mode or whatever because I was planning on Scorching Ray, but I'm just going to flip another switch. Looking at that wizard, wait, how far away am I from him again? 45 feet. Okay, so does he have metal on him besides that dagger? Just the dagger. He's wearing like a cloth like kind of robe. Okay, so I am going to cast heat metal. I'm going to point my pistol at his dagger, the dagger in his hand, and it's going to kind of transform and switch around and basically fire microwave rays or something like that at his uh, dagger. Okay. And any creature in physical contact in contact with the object takes 2d8 fire damage when I cast the spell. Good golly. Yeah, heat metal is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be 11 fire damage. Okay. Until the spell ends, I can use a bonus action on each of my subsequent turns to cause this damage again. But on this turn, I'm going to use my bonus action to tell Gracie to, Gracie, cover this, the chairs. And uh, Gracie is going to fire at one of those chairs. Okay. And that is a 24. That's going to be a hit. I feel like our numbers have gotten so much higher. Right. And Gracie's going to do five force damage to one of those chairs and knock it back five feet. Okay. You shoot, which side do you shoot, left or, or left or right? What side did Robbie come up? I'll go up Robbie the went side. straight up the middle. Yeah, straight yep. up the middle. Yeah. So I'll run around the side. And if I could, like, as I'm doing all this, I don't know if I could get under a table because I'm a little guy or mm-hmm. something. But I, if I'm running under a table, that would be ideal. Sure, totally. Yeah, you can run under a table that's just beyond the uh, that sh- the bookshelf area that Robbie hid behind. So. Okay. And okay. Gracie will be, I guess kind of behind that table too but probably not underneath it okay so gracie moves forward so you guys kind of run up the center perfect all right and she does five damage to it yep to the one chair okay all right cool it is the mage fellow's turn you see him kind of panic when he sees this massive elephant charge towards him and you just see him uh snap his fingers and disappear from that area and teleport 30 feet to the side corner of the room get away he's misty stepping from you does he still have his dagger in his hand 
Oh, he dropped his dagger, okay. I would say, like getting burnt like that. So uh, so he Misty steps away, 30 feet away from uh, Gojimbo. And I'm trying to think, does that count as his movement? Briefly surrounded. I want to say it's a bonus action, but let me... Yeah, Misty uh, yeah, he, he uses, yeah, it's a bonus action. He uses, teleports away 30 feet, and then he casts... So if he teleports the other side of the room, I imagine he's uh, somewhat next to those slippery steps, correct? No, he teleports like off to your right, so an additional like 30 feet off to your right, away from Gojimbo. I would say he's behind the chairs, two chairs on the right-hand side. All right, and then he teleports to the other side of the room, and then he casts Firebolt at you, Matt. Makes sense. So he's going to hurl a big moat of fire uh, at you. Uh, so he's going to make a spell range attack against you. Mm -hmm. A 12. That is a miss. A miss. So you just see this big old fireball just kind of get hurled past you, and it just kind of like lands on the ground. Uh, and then he like hisses uh, disgust that he missed. And then it's the chair's turn. You'll see two of the chairs uh, move in the direction of Kurt and uh, Gracie towards the table. Two of the chairs will stand on the side of the table and lift, take their claw hands and just flip the table up to expose you. Yikes. Uh, they, don't do, they don't do any damage to you, but th they can now see you. So you're standing uh, five feet away from them. The Hello. Two, the two chairs on the right-hand side, one will run up or not run up, but walk in the direction 15 feet towards Carlos and try to grapple him. So I need you to make a strength saving throw, sir. Can I use my speed to try to get out of the way? Uh, no. <laughs> I was say I crit missed. Did you really crit miss? Yep. That's unfortunate. Dude, this the spell is your bane. So it, 15, no, right. you just see Carlos kind of jostle with this chair and the chair takes him and plops his ass down into the chair and then starts to scoot an additional 15 feet towards the top of the ramp. So it's moving you back in the opposite direction towards the top of that ramp. And then the other chair that was beside that will move uh, around the room and take a hit on uh, Gracie. Gracie has an AC of 18. It actually misses. Uh, it rolls a 14. It, you just see one of its uh, claw foot hands miss Gra or swing at Gracie and miss. Okay. Uh, and we are back to the top of the order. Our, that was the top of the order. Uh, it is now Carlos's turn. So you are being restrained by this chair. So I'm 15 feet away from the... Yeah, and you're actually facing in the opposite direction of your friends. Like your back is facing them. You are looking down straight in front of you. You see this ramp that is filled up with grease. And at the bottom of the ramp, 60 feet down is a pit. So I'm picturing a chair with four legs. What is wrapped around my body that is holding me down? The arms. So it's a chair with arms. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Arms swing around you with the, like the claw ends, swing around, grapple you, and it's restraining you into the chair. Now, when I break free, can I use my dexterity or do I always have to do strength? Uh, you can do whatever you want. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. You tell me how you want to get out of this. I will try to wiggle free and use my speed to try to get out of the chair. Okay. So you're just going to combat this thing. So it's going to try and hold you down. Make a uh, dexterity saving throw. Oh. Oh, man. I, I rolled just, high and you rolled high. I, I just a, crit over here, so I don't know what... I can't see what Robbie rolled. I rolled an 18, so I have a 22, but yours is a crit, so... Yeah, so matter. you try as hard as you can, but you just can't get free of this, this chair. It has, like, a really good grasp on you. Yeah, I'm so fast, I'm going to action surge, and I'm going to try again. Okay. Now I crit. Oh, you rolled 18! <laughs> oh, <laughs> opposite rolls. So desperation sets in and Carlos just like with all his might just kind of jostles free of this chair and kind of slips past. And you're, I would say that you're able to like slip out underneath the arms and stand, you're standing to the side of the chair now. What would you like to do? So what do I have left? I just have my movement. Left, I would correct? say that that's your action to do that. Yeah, so you're yeah. standing next to the chair right now. So yeah. if you'd like to move away, this chair could get an opportunity attack mm -hmm. on you. And is this, this attack is to hit me or is it going to be to grapple? It's going to be to hit you. So. Okay. I'm going to run away from it then. Okay. I will take so the attack of opportunity. It's going to swipe at you at, uh, with one of its claws. Uh, roll a 19. I'm pretty sure that'll hit. Yep. So it's going to do six damage to you. As you just see this uh, claw arm just swipe at you from the chair and scratch your backside as you run away. Doesn't hurt me very much. I, I run away 30 feet. Okay. Go Jimbo. It's your turn, sir. I'm going to run 30 feet toward the wizard, and I'm going to do an attack. All right. Roll to hit. 
9 and 22. The 22 will hit. The 9 will miss. Good deal. And this is with a Warhammer. 10 damage. All right, so you just take a huge swing at him and just swipe across his body. What what kind of... You're using a quarterstaff? Uh, this is a Warhammer. A Warhammer. So you're using a Warhammer. You swing down at him and hit him, and it turns him around to the side, and uh, he is kind of scared because he sees this huge-ass elephant just standing directly in front of him. And it is Kurt and Gracie's turn. Uh, Gracie, help Carlos. Gracie is going to hopefully shoot and knock that thing back. I, I know they float and fly around, right? So these are chairs. They're just walking around on their legs. Okay. So they're so, just, they're not flying or anything. All right. So, and it's like right at the top of the stairs, right? If I knock it back five feet, it might yep. slide down into the pit. That is correct. All right. So Gracie fires and gets a, well, there we go. 24 to hit. Yep. That's a hit. 10 damage and it's knocked back five feet. Hopefully. Okay. So you just see the chair get shot back onto the ramp where the grease was and you just hear a, <laughs> it slides down the, the ramp and crashes into the pit at the bottom of the ramp. Yeah, so uh, Gracie kind of like skittered around, shot, and kept walking. I am going to, you know what? I guess I, I got to do this. Scorching Ray, three of these chairs. Scorching Ray, throw to hit. Oy. <laughs> Those are bad rolls, you guys. Mm. All right, so I got a seven, a 15, and a 14. The seven misses, the 15 and 14 will hit too. All right. So I'll say you hit the two that are like very close to you. And then the other one that was uh, on the other side of the room, you'll miss that one. All right. Yep. So the two that, I guess the two that flipped over my table, I'll hit. Yes, sir. The first one takes two damage and the second one takes eight damage. Bad rolls all around there. And then our, I guess two of them are probably within five feet of me, right? That's right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of scrambling back on, on my back, like with my gun doing the scorching ray as it's flying around, but I'm not really disengaging. Okay. I'm just kind of scrambling and freaking out. And probably actually the table probably flipped behind me. Yeah. So now my back's to the table, just scorching ray, fire everywhere as all these books and everything is flying about. Yes, sir. All right. So next up is the mage. He will cast magic missile on our elephant friend over there. Mm-hmm. And he will do it at a second level spell. You don't have shield, do you? Is that kind of paladin? Yeah. Okay. I thought that kind of paladin might have had shield. Yeah, that would be that never happens. So he's you just see him extend his hand with his four fingers out in front of him, and you see four darts fly in your direction, and he does twelve damage to you. Woo. As the darts just fly towards you and just pierce into your uh leathery elephant skin. You got it. It is the chair's turn. One of the chairs will head up towards Kurt and try and grab hold of you. So I need you to make a strength saving throw, sir. You know what? I'm really strong, so this is going to be great. Oh. So that's a nine minus one is eight. Okay. I actually rolled a two. Uh, so you are able to evade the one chair uh, as the other chair that is close by will come up and swipe at you with its uh, claw foot uh, hand. And it rolled a 15. My AC is 17. All right. So you are able to, you're scrambling yeah. around at the backside of this chair and these, uh, these two chairs are trying to get a hold of you and scratch you up, but you are able to evade them, sir. I imagine I'm just literally rolling on the floor, yeah. like just rolling around, dodging, dodging. <laughs> chairs are just flying down at me. Uh -huh. And then there was a chair that was on the opposite side of the room. It, you will see it run across the room in the direction towards Carlos and it will dash across the room to get right up on you, but it doesn't attack you. So you have a chair standing right next to you, Carlos. And it is your turn, Carlos. I assume I'm kind of in the middle of the room since I got pulled back and then I ran back to where I'm at. Yep. Well, I would say you're 15 feet away because you were in a seated position. So when you like stood okay. yourself upright, you ran about 15 feet away from the ramp area. So you're again 15 feet away from the ramp. I will just go ahead and let him take another attack of opportunity. I'm going to run away from him. Okay. As far as away I can get is from that ramp. I'm rolling some real shit over here. 10. Miss. All right. He's missed. So you, you, this chair that is right up on you uh, swipes at you again, and you are able to evade the chair. I know which die is your hot die. He's <laughs> rolling his hot die trying to get me. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like when I'm DMing, my hot die is like really shitty. So it's like not even good. I need to pick a different one. I will take a shot at the, the mage, which is uh, a 20. All right. It's a hit. 10 damage. All right, you do 10 damage to the mage. As a projectile flies past 
our large elephant friend Gojimbo and hits the mage just under Gojimbo's arm. Sure. Because <laughs> Carlos always takes the difficult shots. And it is Gojimbo's turn. I will swing at the mage. 14 and crit. hi yi yi So the 14 hit? The 14 does not hit. Okay. Because he, you see him bring up a, raise his arm, and you can see a magical barrier come between you and him. He's casting shield to kind of protect himself from that second hit. The crit's going to hit, though. Okay. I'm going to see if it's a sandwich. It is not. However, yeah. uh, I see, so I'm going to imagine it like this. I, like, slam my Warhammer down into it, and it, like, uh, the shield comes up, and I it makes me more angry, and I raise the hammer up into the air, and it glows white, and I'm going to go ahead and add in a Divine Smite to my crit. Uh, oh, yeah. So I'm actually going to be rolling 2d8 plus 2, and then another 2d8. Aye. Got to roll higher than a 1 or 2, Matt. That's not great. Uh, <laughs> so 5 for the crit. Oh, oh. wow. Another one, another one. Another wow. 2 damage for the Divine Smite. Seven damage total. You want wow. to switch out that die? Oh yeah, that's a, that's pretty. I rolled that's some shit. Right three there. ones that's and a two. Terrible on a forty-eight. <laughs> oh, I guess I just couldn't really. Get through We're the never going to kill this guy. <laughs> that's what I got. So Gojimbo's wailing on him over there, and you think like jo- Gojimbo's got the upper hand, and you're you're thinking that he's about to bring the pain, but for some reason this may this mage is just kind of like withstanding the storm that he's uh, bringing towards him. Kurt, it is your turn. You have two chairs right up on you, sir. As you are scrambling backwards. Gracie! And Gracie's neck turns and fires at one of the chairs right next to me. Hit. 13. That's a hit. And it's going to do five force damage and knock it back five feet. Okay. I'm going to yell, concentrate fire, and shoot at the uh, one that Gracie just shot twice. Twice. And that is a 17 and an 11. Uh, 17 hits. The 17 is going to do 11 piercing damage. This chair, you see like splinters of wood just flying off of that chair that you are focus firing. It looks like it is basically made of paper at this point. So it's looking pretty, pretty destroyed. And it is back to the mage's turn. So you see him panic because the elephant is on him again. So he is going to snap his fingers one more time and misty step to the center of the room. And he is going to just go into a rage and slam, stomp his foot on the ground. And he's going to cast a fireball. So he's in the center of the room next to you, Kurt. Uh, Is Gracie pretty close to you? Yes. Okay, so Gracie, the chairs, both the chairs are within range of you. So So myself as well? Yeah, you're you're within range as well. So I need for you and Gracie to make a dexterity saving throw. Is he you're, so he's casting this in the middle of the room because I'm like I'm fifteen feet away from the middle of the room. Too. Yeah. So you it is a twenty foot uh sphere, so you will be hit as well. Yes. So he pretty much he's lighting himself on fire too? Basically, yeah. Oh. So that old move. So it's a dexterity roll? Dexterity saving throw, yes, sir. Remember, you have a ring of evasion. Ah, so I just failed my roll. I rolled a one, but I'm going to uh, activate my ring of evasion. I failed as well, but I will activate my ring of evasion. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a five plus my four is a nine. <laughs> Gracie got a 17. He goes to the center of the room. One of the chairs, uh, the chair that uh, Gracie and Kurt were focus firing on, it failed its check. The other chair somehow... <laughs> It, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this, like it passes his check, but it's going to take full damage because it's made of wood, obviously. So uh, with him casting fire, the mage passed his check. Carlos, what did you get? You have to beat a... Uh... He used his ring of evasion. Yeah. Oh, you used your ring of evasion? Okay, so you're, all, you're, you're good. So he does 31 damage total. What was the spell save DC again? Because Gracie got a 17. It was a 14. Okay. All right. So, so you're, we're all taking you're half. Good. Yeah, you're all taking half. And it was thirty one. Thirty one. Yeah. So half so of thirty one. Ooh. Yeah. Gracie's looking pretty rough after that. I. That would have. Yeah. That would have been. Uh, I would have been like one or two hits away from dead. After you see that happen, the room just kind of bursts into flames. So you see again, paper and books just like flying all over the place, and the room's basically like on fire right now, uh, centered at, at the uh, the center point here. And he's looking pretty rough himself. You can see that his robe's like on fire and he's looking pretty beat up. One of the chairs is gone. The other chair looks like it's pretty beat up. You see this fl- a chair that is on fire, Kurt. It is going to 
go up to you and try and grab you again. He's going to make a strength saving throw, sir. He'd be a 17. Or strength or dexterity saving throw. Well, that's... Uh, even if it were dex, it would be just a 12. All right, so you see this chair just grab hold of you and start to head towards the uh, the top ramp of the stairs. So you're stand- now standing at the top of the uh, steps, or sitting in a chair at the top of the steps. Crazy! Uh, and it is... There's one chair 30 feet from you, Carlos. It will run up to you and try and swipe at you with its claws. Don't think that's going to hit a uh, 13. Miss. All right, it's a miss. And it's your turn, Carlos. You have a chair right up on you again. How far away is Kurt from being pushed over? Is it like the next turn is going to be he's going to fall? Next turn, he's going to go down that ramp. So I imagine that the wizard teleported behind me. So I turn around and I see the chair pulling Kurt away and I also see the wizard there behind me. Mm -hmm. I take a knee and I shoot between the mage's legs and I shoot the chair that is dragging Kurt. (laughs) Okay. Uh, 22. That's a hit. 14 damage to the chair. Okay. So you shoot the leg off of this chair and as it falls to the floor it bursts into a bunch of splinters and Kurt you are no longer uh, restrained by this chair. You're laying down prone at the top of the ramp. I scream. (laughs) <laughs> Go Jimbo, it's your turn. I will continue my pursuit, and I will charge at the mage, and break out my hammer, and go to town. I don't think he's as scared of you anymore with your terrible rolls. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't blame him. 20 and 12. The 20 hits, sir. The 12 is a miss. I will again bring down just a flash of light as my hammer descends and we'll try again to do we'll take a first level spell slot so i'll do a 3d8 now plus two 18 damage he looks like he is in really rough shape uh that he is taking a beating right now from you guys there is one chair left and it's by carlos and it is kurt it's your turn You're using gracie gracie help carlos it's a 23 that's a hit and it's nine damage and knocked back five feet. Boom. Whoop, 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 whoop. Is it dead? No. Ah, not. but that it's, chair at least it's not taken, next yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is five. It's, you see the chair get knocked back. And uh, I'm within, th- sorry, I'm within 60 feet of bad guy. 30 feet. 30 okay. feet. Perfect. Yeah. So as I, as I point Gracie to fire across the room at Carlos, I get up from the wreckage and I just start pulling the trigger on my repeater, and I'm going to attack the mage twice. We've got an 18 and a 25. Both hit. 11 damage and 9 damage. Describe your kill, sir. On the mage. So yeah, all this chaos is going on. Like, books and pages are on fire and floating around the room. Gojimbo is right next to the guy. He just smashes him, and then I start firing pop, pop. Just two shots, just straight through the chest, and he just starts tumbling and tumbling backwards into a bookshelf, just completely soaked in blood and and coughing and wheezing. Did the old double tap. Tap, tap. (laughs) All right, and as soon as he dies, you see the the other remaining chair in the room just kind of sit down and just, like, go back to normal, Mm -hmm. how it normally would look as a chair. After you kill him, you all hear a voice in your head, and it is David. I see that you've offed one of my disciples. No matter. You'll soon meet the same fate. Chairs. Chairs. Like chairs, an animated chairs. object. At least it wasn't books. Uh, in the movie, there's a point where they're being held captive, and Kurt Russell, like, he just, like, flies down this ramp towards this pit area, mm. and he almost falls into the pit. That's what I was trying to do to you guys, to get you to fall down into the pit area. No, that was yeah. a good, like, yeah. uh, combat scenario and framing. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Like, if you get pushed back all the way to the back, you're pretty much screwed. Yeah. yeah. So, you guys did really well getting out of the, the grasp of the chairs. Thank God for Gracie. Thank God for Gracie. She's pretty good. Pretty, pretty 
Good. I'll tell you guys. Well, I'll just tell you what's at the. There's a gelatinous cube at the bottom of the pit. So oh, Jesus, <laughs> eating people up. 